What's up, gamers? We are back, and we've got mono blue or mono red burn versus blue black mill. Uh, camera angle is a little bit weird because I forgot to rotate it when I was doing it, but you know we're trying to show off as many different decks as possible. Uh, and it's been a little bit since we've saw some uh, mill. We did have some videos on the channel that had mill versus hammer time, uh, so you know you guys can of course click on the screen and see that. Um, Got a lot of other uh, videos in the queue uh, for you guys to watch. So, again, we're trying to show a, a bit of a showcase or show off as many different uh, decks in Modern as possible because Modern is so much fun. Um, so, like some other decks that are possible to be able to watch. So, if you guys like the ideas of seeing these, you know, let me know and we'll try to put out one of those as the next video because we do have quite a few uh, queued up here. So, we've got like... Um, the traditional Tron, like the green Tron versus the Goblin Char Belcher. We've got 8 Rack versus Infect. Uh, we've got um, an Amulet deck. We've got, I want to say, we have at least one Gorio's Vengeance deck. So qu quite a mix of different decks. We also have uh, a Rhino deck. Uh, is it Wizards? Oh, okay, let's get into this game here. So, bolt certain things out, uh, and then immediately hitting with the Surgical Extraction here. Surgical is an amazing card if you're running a mill deck. It is something that you should uh, definitely have included in the main board, so you can start stripping away pesky, annoying, difficult cards to deal with. So, let's see. Are there, yeah, there is another bolt in hand. So, way things work out here, uh, if you are unfamiliar with, like, the mono-red version of Burn compared to, like, the, I'd say the more common traditional Boros Burn, we'll talk a little bit about it. Really, it's, like, it's budget conscious. It's a way for players to get into the game. It, you know, Burn is the easiest way to get into Modern. Uh, and starting out with kind of a mono-red version of it, that's like, hey, I'm still going to have the Burn spells. But I'm also having a little bit more creatures added in here. I might not have the most expensive creatures, but I could have some other variation of it. It's 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 a fun fun way to kind of get into modern. It also allows you to run a lot more basics. So that way, if you are set, like getting into it, and you're like, well, I'm not sure if I want to have burn be my end deck. I might not want to spend the money on the fetch lands, which I always am a huge pushing of the fetch lands should be in your collection if you want to get modern and there are perfect times to be able to do that especially coming up around the modern horizons three this summer you'll be able to get them for a little bit cheaper as more product will be opened up and those will kind of get into circulation uh usually about that month or so after the set comes out is when they're about the cheapest give or take so our mill deck strategy is alternate win con their goal is to sit there and uh you know force your opponent to run out of cards in their deck and then be able to uh you know have them win from there uh there are a couple of players at the shop that are running emercools so you know mill can be a dangerous one to bring to our lgs but it's still a fun deck to be able to pilot um so we're going to see things here for our mono red player is kind of the traditional route of i'm just going to burn you down i'm going to aggro your face down and try to, to kill you out and we're going to see a dashed ragavan coming out here hoping for some sort of hit off of this uh so we of course do get to make a treasure get to exile a top card and it's a basic land so not the hits that you're hoping for you know imagine if you're able to hit like a surgical or something like that uh that would have been really nice or even just a mill card to get like you know something something to kind of mess with your opponent here um, you know, running the Ragvans is, is a cool uh, addition to a little bit of a burn deck, a little bit of an aggro deck, uh, because, you know, getting a, a Ragvan out turn one, turn two, like, you you feel like you're going going fast and getting some advantages here. Now, Tasha's Hideous Laughter is the kind of go-to way to build mill. It's a little bit different than the traditional route of, like, the speed mill with a bunch of two drops, like Glimpse the Unthinkables and things like that. Now you're kind of more of almost like mid-ranging mill with a lot of three drops tasha's hideous laughters fractured sanity things like that but tasha's hideous laughter is the mvp in a modern right now as a mill card because there's so many decks that are running low cost spells right like a burn deck just gets hosed by this because you're like here's a bunch of one and two cost things uh the highest cost in 
the burn deck or kind of along both sides, whether you're mono red or Boros, is three. All right, you're not going to be running things more than three costs uh, in there. But we see quite a bit gets uh, exiled here because all this is getting shifted away. But this gets you a good idea of what is being run in the deck, right? We're seeing Vexing Devils, which is like the very much traditional. You'll, every now and again, you'll see them in like a zoo list. Um, <laughs> I love it. The player's like, oh, that's a mill deck for you. <laughs> Losing half of my deck, really. Uh, but yeah, you see the, the three costs right there is Light Up the Stage is an amazing card. But Tasha's Hideous Laughter, MVP in this. Now, it is dangerous because, especially at our LGS, it has so many people playing Amulet, playing uh, Tron, things like that. Your Tasha is less effective, right? You might only get like three cards off it if it's like, oh, here's an Emrakul. Oh, here's uh, Ulamog, right? Here's here's something, but uh, you know, some big stuff. So that you know, if you're playing Mill, you're hoping for one of these faster, uh, low to the ground decks that you can really get advantage using Tasha. All right, so now our mono red player is in a tank a little bit trying to debate and go through options like here's that window it's like all right let's count them out see how close we can get you uh three damage skull crack damage can't be prevented this turn just throwing three at the face there's another ragavan and we're not gonna dash it this time looks like it says all right let's just keep a threat out right now which i think it's back and forth like they're tapped out like you can sneak in two extra damage um, I don't know. It's like the the danger of not dashing it out is there are things like Fatal Push. There are things like Drown in the Lock. Those are the two like removal spells that exist within uh, Blue Black Mill. A couple others like you'll see, you know, uh, Baleful Mastery or Murderous Cut and stuff like that. Uh, Soul Scar Mage coming out here, and oh, the Ragman comes in. There's the other removal we were talking about. They Baleful Mastery, uh, just exiles target creature or planeswalker. You could also make it cost less, pay two mana, and your opponent gets to draw a card uh, if you decide to pay it for two mana instead of four. But we just get the hard cast, and let's get hit with a second <laughs> Tasha with these laughter. That's going to, like, really just shred this burn deck here. All right. Boom. Four, five, six, seven, zero. So still seven. Still seven. Oh, man. Eight. Still eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And there we go. Man, that was big hit. So we got to see a little bit more of what is in this mono red deck. And it's it's actually designed to do very well against creature decks. You see, like, we've got the giant in there. You could deal two damage to it. You could play it later on for a 4-3. Like, it's got, uh, like, a little bit of staying power. Uh, and, you know, some flexibility to it here. So we see another Ragavan coming out here. Swinging in three damage. Dropping down to six life. Oh, and another land. That's two land hits. Yeah, the Ragavans are nice. I like, uh, you know, Mono Red deck having... They've gone down a little bit in price now. Uh, let's see, what are they, what are they sitting at here? Ragavan. Alright, so that art version of it is $40. Which, you know, makes sense. And there's an archive trap, one of my favorites right there. Uh, Mill 13. Yeah, so about 40 bucks for a Ragavan. That's not bad. Yeah, mill 13 is great. It also has that added bonus that if your opponent searched, uh, then it costs zero. But that's all, like, you know, the Tasha City Slafter double and the uh, Archive Trap got you there. So that, that makes sense. Now we're going to be going into game two. We just kind of cut the video here. We're not watching any of the sideboard stuff. 
And we'll see how things go for, for game number two. And the other thing with the mono red deck is like it does have that advantage of, you know, I'm not taking extra damage off of fetch off, off of shocks. I'm just kind of going fast, you know, quick and consistent. I'm not sure how many lands uh, the mono red player is running, uh, but that is something it's like you don't have to run as many. And oh, the crabs coming out here. Okay. So this is going to be a little bit difficult and annoying because you're sitting there and going, well, now it's three toughness. And, of course, has the landfall ability. Whenever a land enters the battlefield, uh, then you get to mill for three with the landfall trigger. Uh, but as I was saying with the land count, right, like a, you know, burn deck is running about 20 lands. Uh, one thing that is probably a good idea to start running in the list are things like Inspiring Vantage, Fiery Islet, these Lands that, yes, um, For weeks. you know, are, are helping out. Like, Sunbaked Canyon is a, is a great one. Uh, these ones that, like, yes, you take one damage off it every time you're tapping it for the mana, but it's has that added bonus of I get to draw cards, right? Which is one thing that is often a challenge. And, like, this little sideboard card here, Fry. Let's just fry that little crab, eat him up. So Goblin Guide coming in, trigger, there's a push, so we know that at least uh, likely that we'll lose a creature. It's, you know, that sucks, but it happens. Um, you know, Eidolon is not something that we're seeing as much anymore, which makes sense. Uh, people are still just kind of going, all right, I'm, I'm running a lot more burn spells, which is something that we could see. A lot of the burn spells are cheap for the deck. Like we saw Lava Spikes are in here. We know Bolts are in here. Um, skull cracks in here, rift bolts are in here. Uh, another burn spell that could be considered to be added into this list is like Skewer the Critics because it's another one of those speculate cards. Um, just trying to think of like other ways to kind of elevate and you know speed up the the game plan of let's burn our opponent. Like that is of course if you just want to keep it as the mono red version. Um, other option like Searing Blaze is always nice because you can blow up a, a creature with it, uh, deal three damage to a creature with the landfall trigger, three damage to someone's face. Um, so a lot of the burn spells are very cheap, uh, easy to be able to kind of pick up there. All right, so now we're kind of going through and like mathing it out real quick of going, okay, I have two creatures that have two power each. Your crab has three toughness. So one of them is going to end up hugging it out and absorb the hit. Most likely in this case, it's going to be the Ragman, so I don't end up having you make a treasure. You won't actually exile one of my cards. Uh, so it's just going to be like a nice. So there was just con confirming, hey, your crab has no power, right? I, I can just run into this and, and that all works out okay, right? Yep, it does. And there was a land on top, which Goblin Guide lets you, of course, add to your hand. Ah, here we go. We got some speculate happening here. Speculating about whether or not to be able to light up the stage. I like light up the stage. Uh, it's, you know, it's good. It's a good card. So we do have the speculate cost that we can be able to do. That's one of those cards that, like, used to see a lot of play and has since, like, fallen off uh, a lot more. But I, I like it a lot. I think it's cool. Uh I mean, again, if you're running, like, more Skewer the Critics and things like that, you you could adjust it. You could always, you know, change your numbers. But, again, three is the highest cost that you got in the in the less. And we see a land and a Monastery Swift Spear, which, you know, every red deck's running if its goal is to be a burn deck. There's even, like, dedicated Prowess decks that exist, uh, which are really cool. There's, of course, a new card in Thunder Junction that I've been seeing players test out in the Prowess list. All right, Field of Ruins going to come down, mill three. There's a bolt, there's a bolt. Mm, we don't like that. And a guide. Ugh. Three hits. That Like, that bolt would have been really nice because you could have played the Swift Spear next turn, had the bolt. All right, so we're going to attempt to do the Field of Ruin, but Field of Ruin specifically says destroy target non-basic land. That's the benefit of having the mono red. And so, yeah, that's what there's the players immediately catch that 
and don't like make that mistake. They kind of go, oh, wait a minute, I can't do that because you don't have a, a basic, a non-basic. There's the extirpate. Uh, split second can be relevant, uh, but we're going it, to... It's basically another copy of our ability to strip things like the surgical extraction, but it does have split, se split second. So this is often a sideboard card uh, that mill decks are going to be running and allows them to kind of strip away more things. So we're going to... Pick looks like Ragavan because we know there was one in hand at one point. Yeah, there's the Ragavan one there. So there's probably, our, my guess, at least two more in there, if not one more. You know, sometimes there's a, a, people will run just three of, but we might be up to four. To traditional art. Please say he's got the 2 2 split. Yeah, I love it. I love seeing people do like the, the different arts and switching them up like that because like some of the art's so cool. A lot of people are like, no, I want all four of these. Why? Why not just have different art for each one? <laughs> Maybe I'm just a degenerate in that regard of like, ah, let's let's do some crazy stuff in that regard. Let's do different different art. Alright, things gonna get shuffled up. Only thing right now that's hurting for our mill player is the fact that they can't really feel to ruin anything because there's a, there's only basics and they're hurting for mana. I guess they could like if they get another land, they could always feel to ruin their own field of ruin here. They'll still get a land uh, and get another landfall trigger. Like if they're really hurting for getting blue, like Tasha's hideous laughter cross, uh, double blue, um, glimpse the unthinkable. Or not glimpse the unthinkable. Fractured sanity. You need three blue to be able to cast. All right, and let's get all of our cuts. Good to go. All right, let's hope for something else. Remember, we still have that light up the stage, so we've got those cards over on the left over here. So likely have the option to play Swift Spear this turn. Have two creatures to attack with take one damage assuming we don't get anything else but all right so we played the castle here there is a mountain in exile that we could have also played but i think we're hope is to build up and push for more damage um i don't know i think it's like knowing that our opponent's trying to field of ruin it's dangerous to play that land this turn we could be able to play the mountain play the swift spear and be ready to play the castle next turn and try to push for extra damage. Uh, it could be also difficult if you are sitting there going, well, I've got three lands in hand, right? I We we know two other lands are in hand because they were revealed off our extirpate there. So it's like, well, I guess if my goal is to push for damage, if I do it this way, I guarantee we'll either have him kill the, the crab or I deal three damage but by doing it this way, you lose out on having Monastery Swift Spear, which maybe the one damage and then still having an extra creature could have been beneficial. And there's another land. Swamp comes out. Means Mills 3. We're fine with more lands going. Eh. Losing those giants is a little bit annoying, but it, Crab has 3 toughness, so the 2 damage isn't really going to do it. Now, there we go. Now we get to do the field. Yeah. All right, so now there's that, that conversation about, ah, I didn't think you were going to play it, and then I was like, ah, I was debating about doing that, and yeah, that's that, like, risk, right, of, like, you know, is the three damage enough of a push here? Because this, the goal is to get your opponent to search their library for a land, right? Because if you get to search, then guess what? the likelihood that you are about to mill 13 is pretty high. Because if I'm actively trying to blow up your lands to get you to search, then you are in trouble because I probably have an archive trap or something that I'm ready to throw down. Or you can get super lucky and play two of them. Like that, that's the dream as a mill player. I've been able to do that before and being like, all right, here's two. <laughs> mill 26 cards, please. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, both players cutting their decks. Oh yeah, there's <laughs> our, our red players real uh, 
I'm making these jokes and saying, you know, dear YouTube channel owner, I'm real mad at you for putting this match on camera because why did I have to play against the mill deck? This is a horrible matchup for me. <laughs> There it is, yeah. So he says, since you searched your library, because I was nice enough to give you a land, please mill 13 cards. I think there was a boil in there. Is that what I saw? Uh, we did get to see our Dragon Rage Channelers. Which I don't think is going to be as effective for getting access to Delirium. Like, we're not currently running Mishra's Bobble, which, if your goal is to do Delirium, you know, Mishra's Bobble is, like, amazing. You get to draw cards, you throw an artifact in there. Uh, but that could be a replacement if you're running Dragon Rage Channeler and replace it with Skewer the Critics. All right, just a, just like a a one for one replacement because we've got a lot of prowess creatures in here. We're doing things like that. We've got the burn spells, but I think screw the critics is is worth adding to this mono red list over uh, over the dragon rage channelers at least. If we're looking for if we're like actively sitting here and saying, okay, how could we improve this deck a little bit and and speed it up to get in our game plan because it's like. I, I don't think this is a, a good enough showing of what the deck can do is part of the problem because you see it's like, you know, Vexing Devils in here, which is like, all right, it's a 4-3 body or you dome your opponent for four. Like, it, it could it can do work, especially in a, in a budget version of a, of a burn deck, a red deck. It's It does work. Ah, okay, so there was a question that came up. Are you allowed to ask... You know how many cards are in your uh, library and stuff like that, and yes, because there are cards that care about it. It's like, does somebody have twenty or less cards? Then you know we we need to know for things like our Shell Dock Isle, uh, which you know does care about that. Things like Visions of Beyond uh, cares about if your graveyard has twenty or more cards. So it's like there's there's cards that specifically do care about that that do do matter here. There's the Swift Spear. Needing needing a burn spell though. A lot of them have been milled away. Push for damage here. Let's go in. Trigger. Block there. Take one. Yeah. See, but like, very very tough. Game one, close in life again. It was looking very similar to this. <laughs> there we go. There's the Tasha. So. Technically, we have a landfall trigger here to mill three, but we're just going to go right into it because I don't think there's even 20 cards left in the library. So what are we at? Two. Oh, my gosh. Look at all these lands. Oh, my gosh. Three. Four. Seven. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Fourteen cards, and then it's done. Yeah. That's oh man, Tasha is laughter. Sorry. <laughs> He's saying sorry. <laughs> there you go. Good, you know, good sportsmanship from the players there. Uh, oh gosh, you love to see it. <laughs> yeah, there was a little bit of, of uh, uh, needing to remember to bounce the ragman. We all got it. So yeah, that was you know, good thing. I don't have both of these players' deck lists in front of me right now, but we got to see a lot of it there. So of course, uh, a lot of deck lists are going to be up on Moxfield. So if you look down in the description, you can see links to that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. A little bit more fun, casual as these players. One of them, of course, getting into modern and starting to build up his collection for this burn deck. So it was awesome to see that. Uh, of course, Rob's been playing for a while and pivots between different decks and decided to bring the mill. He kind of ran into some difficulty earlier against uh, Emrakul, but did get a nice matchup here. But thanks so much for tuning in and watching, guys. And I'll see you all next game.